Welcome back to the Cruise Elite Podcast. People ask me all the time about minimalist shoes, and honestly, it's difficult to cover it all. So I thought it would be great to bring the conversation here. Are you ready? Let's get into it. Minimalist shoes, or as some people call them, barefoot shoes. I always thought it was a little silly to call them barefoot shoes because you still have a shoe on, but I get the idea behind the marketing. Honestly, sometimes I call them ninja booties because to me, that's what they are, and that's actually why I love them. Let me talk to you about my very first experience with wearing minimalist shoes. I was working out of a gym. This was about 12 years ago. It was a really cool gym, very progressive. The owners of the gym were very forward thinking. They were into a lot of body weight exercise, kettlebells, that kind of stuff. And both owners were wearing minimalist shoes. And at the time, I was really unfamiliar with them. But there was something about them that I liked. And in talking to them and getting their input, I decided, you know what? I want to try that because that shoe actually rem reminds me of a wrestling shoe. And my background is in wrestling. I wrestled in high school. I wrestled in college. I coached high school wrestling after that. And I'm still involved in wrestling to some degree, but mostly Brazilian jiu-jitsu at this point. So I was really interested in wearing minimalist shoes because they reminded me of my wrestling shoes. And I always loved wrestling shoes. And back in high school and college, I used to say, man, if I could wear my wrestling shoes as regular shoes, I think I would. And I started realizing that I actually loved to train in them because sometimes, both in high school and wrestling, if practice was cut short a little bit, we'd go to the weight room. And rather than having to go to the locker room and change into your conventional shoes, we just go to the weight room and we would train in our wrestling shoes. And I always loved that. I always appreciated the fact that I had a better feel with the ground. And I always noticed that when I was strength training, I felt better. I felt stronger. I felt more stable. I felt more balanced. But back then, you know, I didn't really understand why. So back to that experience at the gym. I decided to buy my first pair of minimalist shoes. And I believe the first pair I got into was from New Balance. Now, 12 years ago, the whole minimalist shoe industry was kind of just taking form. It was becoming more popular. If you guys remember the like Vibram um, sole ones with the five fingers, I think they might have actually been called five fingers. Literally, there it was like putting on a glove and there was a home for each one of your toes in these shoes. And I always thought those looked ridiculous and ugly. Sorry if you're still wearing those. I don't see them as much anymore. But I was like, well, listen, I'm not getting those because those look ridiculous. I'm going to go with the New Balance because they look like wrestling shoes. So that's what I did. So I bought them and I did what I've done my whole life, which when you buy new shoes, you put them on and you just wear them. I didn't really know any better. And so I wore them all day, every day. And I immediately noticed that my feet would actually get sore from having these shoes on. And again, I was like, well, okay, I'm just going to keep wearing them. And luckily, probably because of my experience, you know, doing things barefoot, training barefoot, being involved in wrestling and martial arts, right? Because you're barefoot when you do those things. My foot was probably a bit more conditioned than the average person, but my feet still got really, really sore from being in a minimalist shoe because for my whole life, I had worn conventional shoes that were very rigid, very stiff. They didn't offer flexibility and they didn't offer really all the qualities that a minimalist shoe had. And so when I got into my first pair, it was a very big change for me. And luckily, I adapted over time to a point where I really loved them, and I've been wearing them ever since. And honestly, at this point, I couldn't imagine not wearing minimalist shoes. I have hiking boots. I've got 
winter boots. I've got training shoes. They're all minimalist shoes. I've even got dressed dress shoes, right, for like special occasion stuff. It's all minimalist shoes because I cannot imagine putting on a conventional shoe at this point. I can't imagine taking that flexibility away from my foot in that feel that I love on the ground. So you already know my opinion about minimalist footwear. I love minimalist footwear. But I will tell you this. Although I think everybody should think about what kind of shoe is on their foot, I will tell you that some people will not be able to make the jump to a minimalist shoe, or they have to might or they might have to do it in a more thoughtful way to respect that adaptation period that has to take place so that you can get used to a minimalist shoe. And then of course there might be individuals who are not able to really wear the most minimal of minimal shoes because of different limitations and issues that they have going on with their feet or just their body in general. However, I think that most people probably would benefit from going into moving into a shoe that does allow them more freedom to move. And so it depends on who you are, what your conditioning is, and what you have going on with your body. But I do think that most people could probably benefit from getting into a shoe that has a little bit more flexibility. So what does a minimalist shoe really offer us? The first thing that you hear all the time is that it gives us a zero drop sole, like a flat bottom. Okay, and that actually is something that I really love about minimalist shoes. And actually, when I was growing up, I was an avid skateboarder. And if you've ever seen skateboarding shoes, they're flat bottom shoes, and they're actually pretty minimal. So I had experience wearing skateboarding shoes too growing up, which probably was another reason why the idea of getting into a minimalist shoe was a really exciting one for me, because... I spend so much time in skateboarding shoes and wrestling shoes. So skateboarding shoes and wrestling shoes have a wide toe box most of the time, just like a minimalist shoe. That wide toe box is something that I really, really appreciate about my minimalist shoes, especially for me, because my foot is so wide. Like literally, I have Ninja Turtle feet. If you saw my foot and how wide it is, you'd be shocked. So without a wide toe box, It's really tough for me to be comfortable in shoes. And actually, when I was wearing conventional shoes growing up, it was always a thing. I'd go and try them on, and I'd be like, eh, this isn't really comfortable. It's really, really squeezing my foot, and my feet used to hurt in regular shoes. So I love the wide toe box. And really, just the flexibility, the flexibility of the shoe. A minimalist shoe is so much more flexible than a conventional shoe, it's ridiculous. You can literally twist them and bend them, and you can move them really any way that you want. And we're going to talk more about that in just a few minutes here when I explain to you guys what I call the shoe test, because if you're somebody that might not be ready to jump into a minimalist shoe, but you still want to find a shoe that is more minimal than what you have currently, you need to know how to do the shoe test so that you can figure out what the best shoe for you would be. So we'll get to that. All right, so think about this. You've got roughly 26 bones in your feet and 33 joints in your foot. Kind of depends on what you read and where you look, but generally those numbers are pretty close. 26 bones, 33 joints in your foot. Now, think about your feet. They are your connection to the ground. They are so important. If you want to be a human being that can move well, you need to be able to feel the ground. And with all those joints and bones in your foot come comes with thousands and thousands of nerve endings. And that means that your feet are really made to feel the environment. And when you put on a conventional shoe it takes that feel away. It actually really disturbs the sense, right? Your proprioceptive sense, we call it, which is so important for moving. Think about it like this. What would happen if you put on a pair of winter gloves 
and you had to keep them on and go about your day. You had to use your computer wearing winter gloves. You had to use your smartphone wearing winter gloves. You had to try to cook your meals wearing winter gloves. What would happen? You would actually be really frustrated because you would lose that dexterity and that fine motor control that you need with your hands. And by putting the gloves on and keeping them on your hands for an extended amount of time, over time, you would lose the ability to feel things accurately. And that would be a massive difference in the amount of input that you would get to your brain and your body. And so because of that, you would likely move differently, wouldn't you? One of the things that I think happens to folks when they become dependent on conventional footwear is they don't realize how it really alters the way that they move through the world. And the main thing to, to kind of point out is when you have conventional footwear on, because it's so much more rigid and the materials are so much thicker, the sole is thicker, all the material is thicker, okay? It's almost like you're wearing armor on your feet. And you don't need to care as much or be as careful as you're moving through the world, do you? Because you have armor on your feet. You have a lot of protection. And obviously, in some cases, having that protection is really important, depending on what kind of activity you're doing. But generally speaking, if you become dependent on those shoes and you become dependent on that armor, it really gives you a false sense of what you're feeling. And I think it really causes people to move quite differently and with less care and quality. Here's something that I teach all of my clients and all of our members. Open joints equal strong muscles and closed joints equal weak muscles. So what do I mean by that? This is really cool. And actually, there's a whole demonstration that I like to do to show people what I mean. And I'm going to try to describe it as best as I can. So when joints are mobilized, meaning movement, right? When those joints are open, there is a reflexive response that happens with the local muscles. And that response is actually strength. So when you mobilize your joints, one of the things that you're getting is an increase in something that is called neural drive, which we can just sum up as strength. So when you get an increase in neural drive, you generally feel stronger, you move better, you have better balance, you have better stability, you can even have greater mobility. So remember this, open joints equal strong muscles. Now, closed joints equal weak muscles. Think about compression of joints. If your joints get compressed, that can actually create a reflexive response that is the opposite of what I just described. It can create weakness. So I often do this demonstration for people in a couple of different ways. The first way is more education about how important their footwear is. So imagine this. When you put your shoes on, if it's a conventional shoe and you tie it tight like many people do, you're actually compressing your foot, aren't you? You're compressing your tissues and your joints into the shoe. And for some people, that actually is creating that reflexive response of weakness. And I'm able to show this to people by having them put their shoes on and walk for a moment. And then I muscle test them before and after. And what we often find is that they, they start out with a certain amount of strength. They put their shoes on that may be compressing the joints in their feet. And then we muscle test them with the shoes on. And most people get weaker. And that's a really aha moment for a lot of people. I then have them take their shoes off and perform some of our more favorite joint mobility drills for the foot. We have a whole pile of joint mobility drills for the feet that mobilize all the different joints in the foot. And we choose one of those, and we do, say, three to five repetitions, have them walk a little bit, 
muscle test them again, and now they're strong. From there, we then have them put their shoes back on, walk the same amount, and most people immediately fail the muscle tests again. So it's an opportunity to really show people what I'm describing here, which is open joints equal strong muscles. And remember, when you mobilize your joints, like we did, you are creating movement and encouraging more freedom to move and space in the joints. And we get that reflexive response in strength. When you put those conventional shoes back on, tie them extra tight, and they don't have a wide toe box or a mobile heel, and they compress your joints, you often get the opposite response, which is weakness. This is a really cool experiment that I like to show people. It's super educational. And when I try on new shoes, I actually test my body's response to the shoe. And I, as I was preparing for this podcast, I was sharing the ideas with my wife, Alicia, and she reminded me that years ago, when we first started getting really into this idea of wearing minimalist shoes, and we really discovered them, we were shopping one day, I think it was at REI, and we were looking at the different types of minimalist shoes that they had because we were both interested at that point in getting a minimalist hiking boot. And there weren't very many on the market at that point, so I was trying some on. And what I had my wife do is muscle test me before and after putting the shoes on. And I also checked my own ranges of motion, things like a forward bend, trunk rotations, stuff like that. I think I squatted too to see like what my squat depth was. And what I found with those particular hiking boots was that they all decreased my range of motion immediately and they made me weaker I failed the muscle tests. So do you think I bought those boots? No, I held off. So um, now I actually have hiking boots that I wear and I love. And actually all my minimalist shoes are shoes that fit me well. And when I test them, they improve my range of motion and they give me a good response in terms of strength. So it's something to consider when you are shopping for a minimalist shoe. You can actually test your body's response to see what does your nervous system think? What does your brain think about what you're doing to your feet? You can also do that with the shoes that you have currently, if you're still in conventional footwear, again, just to see what the response is. All right, let's talk about the shoe test. So as I mentioned at the beginning, maybe not everybody should be wearing a minimalist shoe. But as I said, I encourage everyone to get into a more minimal shoe than what they're currently wearing because I think that adding more flexibility to your foot and giving your feet the ability to sense things better so that you can have heightened proprioception, I think that's really beneficial for everybody. So let's say you're somebody that maybe has tried putting on a minimalist shoe and it wasn't for you caused you pain, maybe it just wasn't, it felt like it wasn't enough uh, support, whatever the reason might be. What you can do is test other brands of shoes, even if they're not minimalist shoes, and just find something that is more flexible than what you're currently wearing so that you can start to adapt over time to wearing a more minimalist shoe. So here's the shoe test. Here's what you do. Take any shoe, And you can do this on the shoes that you're currently wearing. And if you are in conventional shoes, I actually encourage you to do this test with your conventional shoes just so you can see what I'm talking about with how stiff and how rigid conventional shoes actually are. And I think, honestly, I think some manufacturers even put, um, they're either hard plastic or steel bars in the heels, which really limits the ability to move the sole of that shoe. Take any shoe. Take it into both hands so that you're holding it so that one hand is basically on the toe box and the other hand is on the heel of the shoe. The first thing I want you to do is bend it in half. I want you to bring both ends together, both upward and downward. Now with a minimalist shoe, you can actually completely fold the shoe in half. I mean completely fold it in half in both directions. You try this with a conventional shoe, 
and those points are not going to come even close to touching one another, especially when you try bending it downward. So that's the first test. Can you fold your shoe in half? Now from there, you, I want you to twist it. I literally want you to twist the shoe. In a minimalist shoe, you can actually put a full twist into it in either direction, and there will be movement in the toe box. There will be movement in the mid part of the shoe, like where an arch would be on a conventional shoe. And the heel will actually be completely free to move, whereas on a conventional shoe, most of them, the heel will not move at all. It won't even budge. So do the twist right with the shoe and see if you can move it. If uh, your shoe is super rigid, you may not be able to put any twist into it at all. And that's not good. You want to be able to put some level of twist into the shoe. So if you can twist your shoe and you can fold your shoe and the heel is free to move from the rest of the shoe and it has maybe a little bit wider toe box, maybe a little bit flatter bottom, then that's likely a good shoe for you to try. And you can use the shoe test just to make sure that you're not in a shoe that is too rigid. And remember, one of those traits that we really like about a minimalist shoe is a flat bottom. Now, if you're not buying a minimalist shoe, it is harder to find shoes that offer a flat bottom, but there still are some shoes available out there that are not marketed as a minimalist shoe that do have a flat bottom. So that might be something to explore as well. All right, so here's the deal. If you want to wear minimalist shoes, you really have to respect them. And you have to respect the idea that when you put minimalist shoes on, you are now going to be dealing with more force when you move. And that could be a good thing for some people, and that could not be a good thing for other people, depending on the person and their history and how they currently move. And do they have any pain issues, right? A person that has a good level of fundamental fitness and conditioning, and they have a pretty healthy gait, which means I'm referring to their walking gait, they may do just fine making the transition from conventional footwear to a minimal issue. And like I did 12 years ago, maybe their feet, you know, maybe their feet get a little sore when they make that transition. That's what happened with me. But I was okay. I adapted and eventually it was fine. Other folks might have a much more difficult time and they might actually have a negative experience with it if they try jumping right into wearing a minimalist shoe and going into their daily activities and wearing them to work and then using them during their workouts or trying to do their you know, weekend, their, their Saturday morning run in those shoes, you may actually pay a price really early on because you're just not used to dealing with that much force. So one of the things that I encourage people to do is do it gradually. Right. Start wearing your minimalist shoes, maybe in just your workouts, rather than just putting them on and going to work and doing everything thing in them. And I definitely would say don't run in them right away. Give yourself time to adapt. OK, that's really, really important. And little by little, your body will start to adapt and be able to deal with those forces. If you are a movement professional or a fitness enthusiast, perhaps you have heard about progressive overload. Progressive overload is something that's discussed all the time in the strength and conditioning world. Progressive overload basically means that you're going to gradually stress your body more and more over time so that you can get the adaptation that you want over time in strength. So we have to basically add stress to our body, but we don't want to do it too quickly because there may be a price to pay for that. So we do it over time. And you need to be thoughtful about how you gradually increase that stress. So that's basically what you're doing when you're transitioning into minimalist footwear. 
when, if you're doing it right. You're just gradually allowing your body to deal with more and more stress over time. Why? So that your tissues can get used to it. Remember, my feet got sore. I even remember my heels getting sore. So it took time for my tissues to adapt and become strong enough to handle the force that was now moving through my body. This is really, really important for you to keep in mind. So remember, instead of just putting them on and going for a run and wearing them to work and doing your workouts in them and doing everything, just put them on for a few minutes at a time. You may even benefit from just wearing them around the house for a certain amount of time and then let that transfer into something else. Maybe you then try wearing them around the house and during your workout. And doing that over and over and over again will help you adapt until you're able to wear them during your day and really as long as you want. All right, let's get into some questions. I have questions here from some of our members and also some of our followers on Instagram. The first question is from John. He's one of our members in the Strength Dojo. And John asks, are zero drop, very flexible shoes appropriate for seniors and or walking on pavement? I'm currently walking two miles three times a week. So I know John. He's one of our members and he's a pretty active dude. So he's doing some form of strength training and he's doing some mobility training and he has other activities that he likes to do outside of just what he's doing in terms of workouts. So for John, I would say that a zero drop, very flexible shoe is absolutely fine for him and for walking on pavement. What I would encourage John to do is just go through that adaptation period where you respect the amount of time that you have those shoes on your feet. And then also consider the fact that you don't have to wear the most minimal of minimal shoes if you do feel a little bit sensitive to having less material on your foot. Use the shoe test and figure out kind of that middle ground. Or maybe you're good. Maybe the training that you're doing will allow you to go to the most minimal of shoes and that'll be fine. But yes, I think that even for... Um, if, you know, for seniors, you absolutely could, could be wearing a minimalist shoe and you could be walking in those shoes. As John said, two miles, three times a week, you just may have to build up to being able to do that. And, um, you know, just respect, respect the progressive overload principles that we covered. This next question is from Ben, also from the dojo. Ben says, I recently transitioned most of my daily footwear and winter boots to Vivo Barefoot, and it's added a level of enjoyment to walking I didn't know I was missing. I've been hesitant to upgrade my hiking boots, though. Is there a point where the terrain really requires a harder sole to prevent foot fatigue from the rocks, etc., like on long hikes? This is a good question, Ben. So I am an avid hiker myself. I don't do super long stuff. I think on average, my hikes are going to be anywhere from 30 minutes to two hours. But it's pretty intense terrain. We're here in central New Hampshire in the White Mountains. And so when we go on hikes, you know, there's there's a lot of varying terrain, rocks, roots, uphill, downhill, a little bit of, you know, kind of basic climbing and stuff. You're really scrambling over a lot of granite. So, um when it comes to uh, hiking, you you definitely would benefit from wearing your minimalist shoes and uh, working out in them and conditioning your body in them before jumping into your hiking. But I think that you could absolutely wear minimalist shoes hiking. I love my minimalist um, hiking boots. I can't imagine wearing a thick, rigid hiking boot at this point, but it took me some time to get used to that. But here's the thing that I want you to think about. So number one, when you are on uneven terrain, your foot is being mobilized in so many different ways because you're stepping on rocks and twigs and you've got just that uneven surface and it's actually a really healthy thing for your foot. Your, your joints are moving, your muscles are being loaded at, at all these different angles, 
And I think that some people actually are more comfortable in minimalist shoes when they're on trails versus when they're on flat, say, pavement. If you think about walking on flat pavement, you don't get that mobilization, do you? It's just flat and it's just hard. So for some folks, wearing minimalist shoes on trails and with hiking is actually more comfortable. So that's something to consider. And you'd have to explore that on your own to see what the case is for you. I also want you to think about this. You have to respect the forces that go into your body when hiking, especially when you're going downhill. This is usually where people will run into problems if they're not prepared enough for hiking. And certainly if they're wearing minimalist shoes and they're not prepared enough, when you go downhill, you're accepting a lot of force into your body because every single step you have to decelerate. Now, remember what I said earlier on in this podcast, when you wear conventional footwear, it's like putting armor on your feet. So your feet are very protected and that allows people to move in a way that may not be the way they would move if they didn't have shoes on at all, right? So consider the fact that when you switch to a minimalist hiking boot, especially when you go downhill, you're now having to decelerate each step much more with much more control than you ever have before. So what does that mean? Well, for one thing, you might hike a little slower at first. That's no big deal. But it also means that you're going to load your tissues more than you were before, especially during the eccentric phase of movement, right? That's that, that slowing down, that decelerating your body. And that can be really taxing on the body. So you might get sore at first, and it's no big deal if you do. It's part of the adaptation process. But just respect all of these different things and know that you definitely can hike in minimalist um, footwear. I love doing it. But just like we've been talking about, you have to give yourself that ability to adapt over time. And therefore, maybe the best way to deal with it is just to not go on as long of hikes at first and then just build up over time. This next question is from Don. Don is also one of our members in the Strength and Mobility Dojo. And Don writes, I've been really enjoying the Zero brand shoes, but wonder if going between them and more supportive shoes while at work is a better protocol for overall foot health. I love the minimal shoes for workouts and casual slash daily wear, but feel I need more support and cushion at work. Okay, so everybody's different, Don. Um, I will tell you that a lot of folks will do well f- with alternating their shoes. You know, maybe you wear your minimal shoe for some things, and then you go back to a more conventional, more supportive shoe for others. I think when people complain about wearing minimalist shoes during their workday, most of those folks are more sedentary than they think. You might be standing, but you're just not moving a lot. And I think it's actually a lack of movement while wearing the shoes that bothers people more than moving. Kind of goes back to what I described with hiking. When you're on uneven terrain and your feet are constantly being mobilized, it can actually be more comfortable than walking on just flat ground. Well, it's kind of similar to just wearing your minimalist shoes at work. If you're just standing all day or sitting all day and you're not moving a lot, you're not getting that mobilization. And therefore, being in a pair of minimalist shoes, if you haven't really done that for very long, your feet can ache, right? And you're, you're not getting any supportive movement that, uh, that helps that out. So is alternating your footwear a better protocol for foot health? Well, it might be for you, Don. And and if you feel that's what you need to do, then that's what you should do. If you're feeling some discomfort from wearing the minimalist shoes all day long at work, then I think that that would actually be a good plan. And maybe you do that for a while. And maybe you find ways to spend more time little by little in your minimalist shoe. And you're either going to find out that with, you know, progressive overload, you can get to a point where you can be comfortable in a minimalist shoe all day long. Or 
like you said, alternating between something kind of middle ground or in a minimalist shoe might be the best solution for you. All right, so there you have it. A little talk on ninja booties and why I love them. Minimalist shoes have definitely helped me in multiple ways, and I encourage you to think about what we've discussed today and consider graduating to a shoe that will give you more freedom to move. But do what's best for you. Listen to your body. It might take some exploration to see what works, and it might also take some specific conditioning and training to improve the health of your feet. If you want to learn more, please follow the podcast and sign up for the Strength and Mobility Dojo. We'd love to have you. I promise you'll learn valuable lessons and build a tool set that will help keep you training pain-free for years to come. Thanks again for listening.